Hello. Today I'm starting a new series on Paul's letter to Timothy, second letter to Timothy. And I'm going to read the first five verses of 2 Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and, I am persuaded, now lives in you also. So 2 Timothy is Paul's last letter, um, certainly the last letter that we have, written in prison from Rome. And this is not a relatively comfortable house arrest of Acts 28. Uh, this is later on in his life when he's actually incarcerated in a dungeon in Rome, awaiting execution under the Emperor Nero. And uh, it's likely that he was executed by beheading um, a few weeks or maybe even days after he wrote this letter. John Stott says this is Paul's last will and testament to the church. So here he is in this awful dungeon uh, in Rome, um, awaiting death, execution, uh, but he writes this letter to Timothy. Um, and at the beginning of the letter, we've got the uh, introduction. He introduces himself. Um, he starts by saying he's an, an apostle uh, of Christ Jesus. He's uh, one of the um, unique uh, members of the early church who uh, met Jesus face to face. The others uh, met Jesus uh, in his life before he was crucified. Paul met Jesus. Um, in a vision on the on the road to Damascus, um, uh, and in other times after that, Jesus appeared to him and called him to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Um, and he says it's by the will of God. Um, it wasn't man's doing; it was God's act, a supernatural act by God that he was called to be an apostle. Um, and he goes on, in keeping with the promise of life that's in Christ Jesus. Uh, as I said, God called him to be the apostle to the Gentiles, to share the gospel. And Paul summarises the gospel here, the promise of life in Christ. The promise of eternal life with God. Uh, the promise of life now. Jesus said that I've come that you may have life, life to the full. Uh, it's not just about um, pie in the sky when you die. It's not just about dwelling with God for eternity, but it's about living with God in the here and now, being part of his kingdom. So that's Paul. And then he says to Timothy, my dear son. Uh, he calls Timothy his son because he was his son in the faith. Uh, he led Timothy. Uh, to Christ um, in Lystra, where Timothy came from. Timothy was, was uh, as it says uh, in verse 5, was brought up in the Jewish faith, but it was Paul who told Timothy about Jesus and how he was the Messiah, how he'd fulfilled the Old Testament scriptures. So Timothy was his son in the faith. Uh, Timothy accompanied Paul on his second and third missionary journeys. Paul obviously trusted him. He sent him on missions to Thessalonica and Corinth. Uh, 
when Paul went back to Jerusalem, knowing that he would um, be uh, arrested there, uh, Timothy accompanied him to Jerusalem. It may even be that, that Timothy was with Paul uh, when he sailed to Rome. But he was certainly with Paul in Rome when he was uh, under house arrest, um, uh, as I mentioned at the end of Acts. So Paul and Timothy had a long relationship. Um, Timothy had come to faith in Christ through Paul and he'd served with Paul and he'd been a faithful um, worker with Paul. Paul goes on and he's greeting grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Um, Paul takes the, the normal greeting of letters in those days and, and makes them Christian. Um, in the letters to Timothy, he adds mercy to the usual grace and peace. Grace is God's kindness to the undeserving. Mercy is his help to the weak. Um, and in human terms, Timothy was quite weak, as we shall see um, in, in later sessions. Peace is about that restoration to harmony and wholeness that only comes through Christ. And then let's uh, let's look at this uh, first section from verses three to five. And three things uh, I want us to note from that. First is Paul's prayerfulness. Verse three he says, "I thank God whom I serve, as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience." As night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. I said uh, Timothy was, was Paul's son in the faith. He was very dear to Paul. And um, Paul knew he was coming to the end of his life and he was uh, he passed on the baton to Timothy. Um, and so he knew how important it was. Uh, he was no longer going to be around. It was up to Timothy to carry on the work of the gospel. Uh, and so he was constantly in prayer for him. And what an example um, that is to us. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. I wonder if we're faithful in our prayers. I wonder if we're faithful in our prayers for our pastor, Andy, for the leaders of the church, uh, for those running different um, groups when we uh, are able to, to start them up again. Um, for those who are younger in the faith, um, for children who've um, come to know God or who are learning about God, um, for young people. Um, all these people need our prayers. They need us to be faithful and constant in prayer. Uh, and God calls us to that. He notices how many times Paul talks about remembering. He says, I constantly remember you, recalling your tears. I'm reminded of your sin and sin of faith. He's thinking about Timothy as he's praying and he's remembering um, Timothy's strengths and weaknesses and the way God has used him. And he's, he's deep um, and committed in prayer. Uh, and it's easy to let our prayers life slip it's easy to get it and it get crowded out by other things it's easy to prioritize other things that seem more important but nothing we need to remember is more important than prayer and paul shows us a tremendous example here and we need to pray for the next generation of um, leaders and teachers uh, in the church uh, that god will raise them up that god will um, help them to grow in their faith and to be strong uh, and faithful in their, their service of God. So Paul's prayerfulness. And then verse 4 really brings home uh, the mutual affection between Paul and Timothy. Paul says, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. Uh, when they'd last parted, um, they probably realised this might be the, the last time they saw each other. Uh, 
uh, and so Timothy had, had been reduced to tears, and uh, because he um, he loved Paul and he cared for him, and he had spent so long uh, working with him, and Paul had been like a was his father in the faith, and and nurtured him and built him up and encouraged him. Um, and Paul, in uh, in his turn, you know, he longs to see Timothy again, um, and uh, to even have great joy in in seeing Timothy. I wonder again, uh, what about our relationships in, in the church with one another? Uh, are we just passing acquaintances, um, or do we have a deep affection affection for one another? Do we really care for each other enough to pray for each other, uh, enough to be really concerned and committed to each other? It's a real challenge, isn't it? Um, we're called to fellowship, koinonia, in the spirit um, as part of the church. We're called to that closeness that we have through Christ. Um, is that a reality in our church? Or are we just like any other club and when we see People, it's hello and we're friendly, but it doesn't go any deeper. It should go deeper uh, in the body of Christ. So that's the second challenge to us. Uh, and then thirdly, it talks about Timothy's faith. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded now lives in you also. Timothy had been taught by his um, his grandmother and his mother, uh, taught in the Jewish scriptures, um, and that was important. And so he was ready when Paul shared the truth of about Jesus, uh, that he was the Messiah. Timothy was ready to receive it. And it's very important um, teaching our children grandchildren um, about God and teaching them the Bible, teaching them what Jesus has done. And, and Sunday school is very important. Sometimes I think we, we tend to think of Sunday school as uh, just keeping the children occupied while the, uh, while the adults are busy on the important stuff. But uh, Sunday school and um, groups for, for children are so important to pass on the faith to the next generation, to give that grounding, to sow the seed that the Spirit will reap, um, perhaps while they're young, perhaps later on. It's so important, the next generation. Um, young people, Jesus said, let the little children come to me and don't hinder them. So service um, in Sunday school, in youth work, um, and whatever is so important, so vital for the church. So in those verses, we see those three things, Paul's prayerfulness, um, their mutual affection, um, and the faith of the next generation. Um, and to finish, I'd just like to read some verses from Philippians 2, where uh, Paul talks to the Philippian church about Timothy. Uh, he says this, I says, uh, he says, uh, Philippians 2 verse 19 onwards, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. Everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. Remarkable um, uh, praise of, of Timothy there. I have no one else like him, Paul says. Um, and he says, uh, other people just look out for their own interests. But Timothy looked out for the interests of Jesus Christ. Do we? Look out for the interests of Christ, or are we just focused on ourselves? Um, we leave you with that challenge. Uh, let's pray. Uh, 
Father God, we thank you for this letter of Paul that he wrote right at the end of his life. Thank you for his faithfulness and that even uh, almost on the eve of his death, he was concerned for the um, gospel continuing to go forward uh, and for uh, Timothy and his uh, service. Lord, will you give us um, a concern for the gospel, a concern for your interests like Paul and Timothy. May we have uh, hearts of affection and uh, deep love in Christ for one another. May we be committed in prayer um, or uh, everyone uh, in the church. Uh, and Lord, um, we pray that you will nurture uh, the faith of us all, and especially those who are young in faith, and that you will help them to grow in their knowledge and trust in you. So, Lord, we just thank you for your word. We pray in Jesus' name. So thank you again uh, for joining me, and um, uh, I'll be back in a, in a couple of weeks. Bye for now.